Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hey everyone, you're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. We have a great guest today. It's it's that time of year again. Baseball season is starting around Louisiana and all over the country. I'm excited. I'm a big baseball fan since I could walk. My dad and me were Yankee fans growing up and, and obviously being from Louisiana, baseball fans of LSU and UL, Tulane. And speaking of Tulane... Speaking of ULL and Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, we have their head baseball coach joining us today. I'm very excited. Uh, Matt, Dennis, Matt, thanks for joining us. Man, I appreciate it, Lee. How's everything going? I appreciate you having me on. And uh, just look outside. It's baseball weather, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I guess this is a time of year where you say, Coach, can you get these guys to throw 90 in the cold? I mean, <laughs> or arms, arms. We're just worried about strikes. Right. Right, find that location, man. Um, you you have an extensive background to Louisiana, and and people that are not Cajun fans, and I just say that that because this goes all over the state. But people that are listening from Shreveport, or you know, we've got people in Texas that listen to the show. I mean, you started your career, you know, learning the ropes in, at Northwestern State in Natchitoches back in the day. I mean, as a college assistant. Yeah, it was a great jumping off point for me. I was uh, still playing professionally and then had a chance to uh, to jump in with Rob Childress and, and uh, Dave Van Horn down there at Northwestern State. And, uh, I jumped at the chance to get my, my master's and, and start my coaching career. And uh, it's probably the best move I ever made. And then you, you were at UL um, as an assistant to the late Coach Robichaux. I mean – Talk about the impact Coach Robichaux had on your career. You were with UL during a phenomenal season, uh, you know, hitting coach, third base coach. You know, you overseen, you know, personnel, recruiting. Uh, 19, 2014, y'all, I mean, it was a 58-10 and 10 season. Y'all won the conference. Y'all had a 26-4 and 4 mark in league play. Three consecutive Sun Belt tournament titles, 14, 15, and 2016. But what did Coach Robichaux mean to you during that era? I mean, that was a great time to be uh, a part of UL, and you were there as an assistant. Well, a lot of people know my story. And, uh, you know, I had I had lost everything because I couldn't put a beer bottle down. I was the associate head coach at Texas A&M and for close to six years and, and uh, lost it all, uh, but, you know, because I was a drunk. And... Uh, Nobody in the country would give me a, an opportunity, although I had a pretty good resume. I was, I was pretty much damaged goods, and there was only one guy, uh, Coach Tony Robichaux, man, that believed in second chances. He told me, I don't care what you've done. I only care what you're going to do about it. Yeah. And uh, he gave me that second chance, which to me is the most powerful force on earth, is, is redemption. And uh, then, you know, after that, it's up to you to make the most of it. And uh, so... What started off as a boss quickly became a mentor and then quickly became one of my best friends. And, and uh, you know, I got there in 2012 and, and uh, just just kind of got my feet back on the ground. And we suffered through, a, a, I got there in the middle of the season, we suffered through a pretty tough season and hit the road recruiting. And, and uh, we, we set out to turn this thing around and, and hit the personnel jackpot with some kids we already had on the team and then some some guys that we brought in and had the largest turnaround in the NCAA in 13. And that set the stage for 14, which was, you know, we dang near pulled off the impossible. And, uh, you know, I still feel like we have unfinished business from that team. Uh, I felt like that team should have won a national championship and first mid major ever to finish the regular season as a consensus number one ranked team in the nation in all five polls. And, uh, we did it with a lot of the same kids from the 2012 team and a few new recruits. And uh, it just speaks to the power of brotherhood and the power of team and the, the, the power that all things are possible. And uh, it was an incredible redemption story. And it opened a door for me to go to Sam Houston state. And we had a, a great five years there. And, and uh, you know, tragically coach Rowe passed way too soon. And, and uh, you know, I, my family and I, uh, 
felt the, the call to come back over here. The Roba shows wanted us to come back over and, and obviously, uh, our love for Cajun nation and, and, uh, just everything that the school represents and the opportunities that it represents, uh, you know, was something that we knew that we wanted and, and had to do. And so, uh, unfortunately, you know, everybody and everybody around the world hit with a pandemic. We only got 17 games in last year. And so really looking forward to tomorrow night and, and really kind of jumping, you know, jumping off into what I consider really and truly our first season. Coach, you're going to take a quick break, bring you back, talk about your schedule. Y'all going to open, obviously, with Tulane on the road, and Tulane's got a great program in state. Like, as you know, everybody's got talent in this state, uh, like Texas, when you were in Texas coaching Sam Houston. But we'll be right back. We're going to have more with our head baseball coach from UL of Lafayette, the Raging Cajun, Matt Deggs. Well, Matt, we'll be right back with us. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. Uh, our guest today is the head baseball coach of UL and Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns. Matt, um, you know, big time before we get into the schedule, I mean, I know that y'all open with Tulane. Uh, I want to mention that just so people will know, and I know it's not a full crowd, but still want to mention, what what is the time the first game starts tomorrow for, at Tulane? It's actually been bumped up due to weather, uh, obviously, to, to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Two and I think it was originally set for like 6, but uh, – we got together and, and decided it's probably better off, especially being early with these arms and, uh, you know, the, these young guys just to, to try to play in the sunlight. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting with the cold, as you know. Um, you know, the colder it is, the harder it is these guys to throw high velocity. And like you said, location is going to be a key uh, to open the season. But your roster, Coach, has got guys from all over the United States. And it's very interesting. I mean, you've got – you know, I know Brennan Bro returns. He had a 310 average uh, last year. I know it was a, a season cut short for everybody last year. Uh, y'all were 79. This is before even conference play. Y'all didn't have a chance to even play a conference game last year. But you return Brennan Bro. Uh, I know you've got uh, interesting Sam Bianco's on the team, uh, Coach Bianco's other son. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell us about that because his, he's got a son at LSU, and you have – I guess is young at one of his younger sons uh, playing for you now. Yeah, we've got Sam here. He's a he's probably a chip off the old block. He's just a bulldog that loves to compete and get after it every day. He's a hard worker. Obviously, he's a freshman and and he's got room to grow and and improve and get better. But uh, he's got a great mentality. He's a smart player and uh, he loves to play. So I'm glad he's here. And what I've noticed about your pitching staff, Coach, you like these tall arms. You got some tall guys. I mean, Connor Angel is six six, also from Canada, Quebec. That's interesting. How did, how do you? you know, and LSU's got their first Canadian signee this year. But uh, is he one of the first to come from from actually Canada? I mean, he's one of your top pitchers too. Yeah, I mean, we've had a Canadian pipeline through the years, which you know predates me, and uh, he he came out of a JUCO in Florida. And that's where we, we signed him from. And I, I truly believe we could fill the basketball team if uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if you include our pitching coach, two-time big league all-star B.J. Ryan, who's six seven. Uh, you know, Carter Robinson six nine, Angel six six, Moriarty six six, uh, Dane Dixon six six. Uh, you know, we could we could put we could probably compete a little bit at basketball. Yeah, Will Moriata is what six five. Also, David Christie six yeah. five. Uh, Connor yeah. Wiley is six four. Um, you got a uh, you got a pitcher uh, Hayden Dirk from North Vermillion. He's six three. Uh, I mean, yeah, it looks like yeah, six, Bradford uh, Austin Bradford six five. It's uh, you know, I've, <laughs> I'm looking up at all these guys. I'm five eleven, so uh, <laughs> I'm constantly looking up at them. Jeff Wilson six four from Plano, Texas. Oh yeah. We're going to leave somebody out. I guarantee you, it's it's uh, the size, strength, and speed of kids nowadays is incredible, and I'm sure you see that on the football side of things. It's just it's constantly evolving through training and uh, you know 
how they eat and nutrition and just everything is it's an it's an incredible it's a different game. And coach, you speaking of football, I saw this kid play football at Ruston High School. He transferred to you from LSU. CJ Willis was a heck of a football player in high school as a quarterback. Uh, now you got C. another six foot three kid, uh, long, athletic. Uh, really like CJ. He loves to compete, and he's very very versatile. Uh, we'll take another quick break, Coach. When we come back, I want to talk to you about going into the season, you, your strengths going in, you know, whether it's pitching or hitting or what, which one's ahead of the other. We'll talk about that. Coach, get an idea of some of your local guys. There's always a lot of St. Thomas Moore kids on the team. That's been going on for many years. A lot of a great program at STM locally. Uh, but we'll be right back. We have, we'll have more of Coach from the ULL baseball program, UL Raging Cajuns. To Matt Deggs, we'll be right back. Looking for a used car? Harvey Autos has three dealerships, which means three times the used vehicles. They've got everything from fuel-efficient compacts to luxury models, even hybrids, and certified pre-owned with a warranty. Check out John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, or Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Welcome back. You listen to the Sports Scouting Report. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, speaking of the team again, you know, didn't really get a chance to get deep into pitching last year going, you know, just playing, you know, under 20 games. Y'all didn't play a conference game last year. Um, so, really didn't get to see who was going to, you know, step up in conference play. Y'all didn't have conference play in 220 because of the season cut short. But going into the season, um, How's, how are things looking going in with your relievers and your and your three starters? Talk about your three guys that will probably take the mound this, this weekend for you. Pitching was a strength for us a year ago, and uh, I truly believe it's our backbone again this year. And any time that's the case, I mean, you've, you've, you've got to be pretty optimistic. And, and so we returned a lot of guys that we might not have gotten back and then kept some kids coming in that we might not have gotten. Uh, due to COVID and Major League Baseball shortening the draft, uh, et cetera. And so we've got a really good mix of power arms, uh, guys that, that can get after a fastball and then have a, have a wipeout pitch. And then uh, we've got some pitchability guys, and, and we've got some guys in the back of the bullpen uh, that understand our game as far as attacking hitters and being able to build your position and hold runners late. Uh, so I like our mix on the staff. We just got to stay right. We got to stay healthy and, and keep working to get better. Uh, what do you think of Connor Cook, Coach? He was a reliever for you. Uh, had a couple of saves in two twenty. Being he's a Sulphur native from Sulphur High School, right, right Lake Charles. But what do you think of Connor Cook, uh, you know, the young sophomore for you? He's going to pitch in the big leagues. Uh, he uh, he reminds me a lot of a young David Cohn. Uh, six foot, six foot one righty that, you know, metrically is probably the best athlete at the school. And, uh, he's a, he's a freaky athlete with 40 some odd vertical. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a six, two, six, three, sixty guy, uh, just probably pound for pound, one of the best athletes I've ever been around. And he's, he's got big league stuff. It's just a matter of harnessing everything and, and continuing to learn how to pitch. Yeah, out of out of your pitchers, coach, who would be your best location guy right now, and who who throws the most heat right now? I mean, who would be up there, and what would that be? Whether it be ninety three, ninety six, or, or or higher? Well, Connor Angel's been up to ninety eight a bunch. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, Hayden Dirk, a true freshman, uh, is he's going to be ninety four to ninety six. Uh, he's been up to ninety eight. Uh, he's a guy that we wouldn't have gotten to school probably uh, if it wasn't for COVID. Uh, just because everybody's season was cut short, he'd have been a really good draft. Uh, Connor Cook is he can he's up to ninety five, ninety six. Uh, best command guy is probably our our six foot nine guy Carter Robinson. Uh, he can really command it for a big guy, which is is kind of an anomaly because it's hard for. For tall guys to sync up, but he's uh, he's got great fill and, and just great pitch ability. You know, coming uh, being in Louisiana all your years, coach, being with uh, the late Roby Show, Coach Roby Show at UL, and also at Northwestern State with Coach Van Horn, and then you know you spent time at head coach Sam Houston did a great job there, uh, played ball in Texas. What what is the difference to you? And obviously Texas is a bigger state, but. 
what is your what is your opinion of the talent that comes out of Louisiana? Isn't it per capita really some of the best talent? Even though there's not as many schools like in Texas, I'm I'm sure you know you know this, but in Houston alone, I mean you could see four or five hundred baseball players sign every year just out of Houston. But Louisiana's really uh, come on the last twenty so years with Louisiana talent and LSU Eunice. Uh, how is important uh, would LSU Eunice made the whole recruiting game important for the program here here? Uh, at UL? Well, there's, you know, Texas obviously pound for pound has some of the best talent around. Uh, when I was at Sam Houston State, it made it nice because you could live in Houston, which was an hour away. Uh, Louisiana, obviously, we've, we've, the best teams we've had have been chock full of Louisiana kids. And uh, so it's a great recruiting base. It's a, it's a baseball state. Uh, super athletes and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, they take their baseball very, very seriously over here. And, and we, we don't want to leave out, we've got three really good programs in Louisiana, also a couple of junior college programs, one in New Orleans, uh, one in Bossier City. Um, and, and, this, and the junior college ranks a lot of people, coach, don't realize this, a lot of football people, but, there's so many good junior college programs where kids have really good grades and go and just, you know, work on their game a little bit, right, Coach? Work on their pitching, maybe develop a pitch, uh, gain weight, become a better power hitter, a better hitter. I mean, there's so many uh, junior colleges to recruit from now, too. That's a great place to start. You know, I played junior college baseball. A lot of our staff played junior college baseball. It's a great place to knock out some basics and a great place to – to get your feet wet and cut your teeth. You know, I spent five years as a head coach at a, at Texarkana junior college. And, and even for a young coach, it's the, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because you learn how to do a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, I was the, <laughs> I was the trainer, the, the scheduler, the, the, uh, you know, the, the guy in charge of the apartments, the guy in charge of the field. Uh, I was actually the AD. I mean, wow. we only had two sports. Well, we only had two sports, baseball and softball. But, uh, you know, it's just a great opportunity to, to become very, very versatile at stuff that you're going to be able to have to do. Oh, 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 by the way, who handled the budget for baseballs and who raked the field? Who did You did that too? You do it all, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you do it all. Yeah, I mean, people don't and, really realize uh, that at smaller colleges you have to. Uh, you don't have the staff, you know, when you're at those smaller schools. And I'm glad you said that, Coach, to people listening, you know. No, you do it all, and it's good for you. And, uh, you know, that was that was the best the best start that I could have ever gotten was my five years at, at Texarkana Junior College. And, you know, you got a chance to make it your own. And, uh, you know, one thing about that, that level is you get to, you get to work and practice and you get to get after it and you play a fall season and a spring season. And, uh, you know, for, for a young coach, it's just a great learning ground and a great proving ground. Coach, I want to ask you this, a baseball question for, and listeners uh, might like this too, but you know, a lot of programs in the last 10 years have gone to not one closer, but two closers, uh, and, and you've seen more of that in the last five to ten years where not putting too much work on one guy that might be your stud throwing 95 or 98 or whatever they throw. But, you know, you see so many of these teams now in the top 25. Some will even have three closers like Florida did a couple of years ago. What's your thoughts on that when it gets late in the game or it's a long season um, with having multiple closers uh, on a season? Well, I play it by my gut, you know, and uh... – just because there's a closer by definition doesn't mean that he's the best matchup. And, you know, sometimes the save is in the fifth inning with the bases loaded and you're nursing a two run lead. Yeah. Uh, you know, so versatility is key. The ability to have versatile guys that are unselfish and sold out to the team uh, is key. And then I, you know, I like to create some utility guys that can pitch in any spot, any place, anywhere. Uh, from the back to in the middle of the game, just to spot starting. And so, you know, versatility is a key identifying roles and then being able to, you know, possibly perform, be able to perform a, a multitude of roles. Do, do, do you think college uh, fans put too much of an emphasis on having a lot of lefties? 
as pitchers? I mean, does do you have to have a lot of lefties? Well, the, the game is is obviously left-handed hitters and left-handed pitchers can be an advantage, but if you really look at the game, it's a right-handed game, and the majority of guys are right-handed, and the majority of guys, the majority of pitchers are right-handed, majority of hitters are right-handed, and if you just go through rosters in the big leagues, you might see one lefty in the bullpen. That's uh, that's you know, a, a lineup of uh, three to four lefties in the lineup. Uh, so the theory on that is righties always see righties. Lefties don't see lefties as much. And so, uh, you know, while you don't try to build it, you want to have a balance. Uh, lefties are, are – definitely an advantage uh but the game is centered around right-handed people and right-handed players and so you want to make sure that you have a good mix of both of those i want to mention again that the raging cajuns uh coach's team is going to take on Tulane for their first game that two o'clock in the afternoon coach said they moved it up saturday uh at Tulane uh and sunday against Tulane, uh, three games, and then Louisiana Tech follows that. Coach, this is I looked at your schedule. You have a tough, tough schedule. I mean, you play Tulane. Uh, you know, you got Rice, three games with Rice. You got LSU. You got Houston Baptist, uh, Mississippi State, Southern Miss, TCU. I mean, who made this schedule? <laughs> it's, a tough one. <laughs> it's a tough one, man. Uh, Coach Babineau does a great job with the schedule. He's been doing it 25 years, and, and uh, you know, we sit down and visit on it, and we take on all comers. And, uh, you know, I've, I've said it several times. I'm not concerned about my record. Uh, if you look at my record, it probably mirrors somewhat of an MMA fighter. None of those guys go undefeated. <laughs> and uh, for me, it's all about the scrap, and it's all about getting better, and it's all about sharpening our team. Uh, to be able to take down some giants when it matters and and then April, May, and June. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we've been able to do that over the years. I'm going to tell you what, Coach, your team's going to be battle-tested as much as anybody in the country. Uh, And then, by the way, you play ULM in conference, Coastal Carolina, Nickel State. You got Arkansas State. I mean, you got South Alabama, who's no slouch. And obviously – They're all good. McNeese. Little Rock, Little Rock is not bad. I mean, UT Arlington and uh, UNO to close out the season. Just everybody that has everybody, been- everybody in college baseball is good, and uh, they all have you know a pitcher or two that can beat you, and they all going to be able to to stack some guys in a lineup that that can hammer mistakes. And college baseball has changed over the years. It is a definite definite developmental ground and, and uh, feeder into minor league and then ultimately major league baseball. Coach, we want to get you back one more break. We have a question from a fan for you that we want to ask you the next segment. We'll get Coach back for one more segment, but it's a good question about catchers. How do you recruit mm-hmm. catchers? How hard it is to find a good high school catcher? We'll be right back. Uh, you listen to Sports Scouting Report. We'll be right back. So, hey, guys, just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Harvey Autos. If you need a new or used car, there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out. John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, and Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Low prices, honest people. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You're listening to Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen, our head coach from UL, Matt Dag's doing a great job, Coach. Excited for the UL fans. Excited for you. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a full season, right, Coach? A full season, and everything will get oh, back yeah. to normal. Um, I want to mention, before we get back to Coach, uh, Air Force will be visiting LSU 1 p.m. That could change. And then Notre Dame comes to LSU Saturday. And then Monday, LSU, Louisiana Tech. Uh, UL opens up with Tulane at Tulane to 2 o'clock. Coach, we have a uh, – a question from a UL Raging C- Cajun fan, Dahard Jim from Abbeville, asked me um, to ask you, what, how hard is it to recruit catchers out of high school, which is obviously a tough position? Well, it's the most important position on the field. And, you know, what, what you look for are guys that can, can catch and throw and, and guys that can really receive and present strikes. 
uh, first and foremost. And then you're looking for a guy that can communicate. He's got high energy and uh, he's able to command and, and be very demanding and, and develop a rapport with a pitching staff. So your catching spot is multifaceted. Anything that you get, and this is my opinion, anything that you get from a catcher offensively is gravy. Uh, he is there to walk the pitcher through a game. The pitcher sets the tone and the catcher maintains the tone. And, you know, the one thing I tell guys that catch for us is your job is to host the party. And uh, you need to be the best party host out there. And you got to make sure that everybody's having a good time at the party. There's plenty of chips, salsa, dips, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you don't worry about anything else. And, uh, you know, so there is a, there is a lot to being able to run out and catch at this level. And, and so, uh, are they hard to find? Most certainly. Uh, but they're definitely out there. We have a question from Lisa from New Iberia. Coach, talk about your infield and what you've been impressed so far going into the season, your, your infield for this year. Well, we're pretty much brand new on the infield. You know, we've, we, uh, we addressed several recruiting needs a, a year ago and brought in, uh, I think we've got 21, 21 new guys and 19 returners and really wanted to uh, improve our competitive balance and build this thing from the bottom up where we're just surrounded by pushers and there's competition and iron sharpening iron every single day and, and then increase and improve our athleticism and some interchangeable parts. And so I think we've done that and time will tell. Uh, we're definitely a work in progress. Uh, I think the way we start, probably won't be the way we finish just because it's so competitive out here, but we're super athletic on the infield and uh, we've got options. Uh, we've got two or three different guys that will compete to play shortstop, second base, third base. And, uh, you know, so I, I really like our versatility and, and our chance to become a, a very good defensive ball club. I want to mention this coach uh, kind of changing the subject some, but, were you happy for the Dodgers to finally win the championship in the MLB or not really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, Hey, you got to understand something here. I'm a die. I'm, I'm from Texas city, Texas, just South of Houston. And I'm a diehard Astro. I figured that. And, uh, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. So yeah, I'm probably the only person in the history of Astro fandom that, uh, got grounded when he was 15 years old for throwing a temper tantrum after we uh, lost to the Mets in the 1986 uh, oh, NLCS. I love it. So <laughs> that's that should tell you a little bit. Yeah, I, I've been. I was a Yankees fan only because Ron Guidry was pitching one day. Yeah, and my dad and me were eating popcorn, and I'm seven years old, and 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 I'm like, Coach, where? I mean, Dad, where is Ron Guidry from? Lafayette, Louisiana. And boom, I was a Yankees fan after that. You know, Roger Clemens, you know, Reggie Jackson, Mr. November, you know, just on and on. Mm -hmm. Yogi, Yogi Berra, Babe Ruth, you know, I, you know, so. But, and I, get, I take a lot of heat, Coach, for that, being in Louisiana and not saying Astros. I got to tell you that. A lot of Astros. Hey, well, Astros. you've got you've got the Gator to fall back on now. I mean, it's uh, Louisiana Lightning over there, and what a career he had. He had a career, and, and you know, it's it's amazing uh, like Tampa Bay, I was watching the World Series this past year, Coach, I and mean, I'm sure you did, but it's amazing how a no-name, supposedly no-name team can get there and have 14 arms throwing 98 miles an hour, and everybody was, you know, precisely in the moment. It was, uh, it was an incredible World Series to watch if you're not a Dodgers fan or Tampa Bay fan. So. Well, if you get the right guys in the right spot at the right time and they're all sold out to their job, duty, or function, uh, you know, and they've, they're armed with faith and willing to go out and take action every night. Uh, you know, at that point, anything's possible. I got to ask, I got to ask you this coach, because you're an Astros fan and I, I can't leave this conversation without asking you this. Alex Bregman being from, you know, playing at LSU, being from Albuquerque, New Mexico. What do you think of his ability as a major leaguer? Where does he rank you, you think right now as a hitter in the MLB for the Astros? Well, I was fortunate, you know, Alex was at LSU when I was my last time I was here. Uh, 
you know, in 13 and 14. So uh, I think in 13, Alex was a freshman, and then 14, he was a sophomore. And at the time, we had baby Blake Trahan at shortstop. And so those two guys were both Team USA guys, both both guys that you knew were going to play in the big leagues. And, uh, you know, I'm thoroughly impressed with Alex. And he reminds me a lot of Jeff Bagwell. And, uh, you know, a guy that's six foot, maybe a little bit under six foot, but uh, very strong in his hands and forearms and, and lightning quick bat. He commands the strike zone. He's a really good defender. Uh, he's a plus base runner. Uh, he's got he's got a little bit of everything. And uh, he's got the it factor. And with that, he, he lacks no confidence. And so he's got a very short memory. He's able to respond, uh, you know, when things aren't going his way. And you know what you're going to get out of him every single night. And Jeff Bagwell was the same way. And Jeff Bagwell wound up in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I think if Alex stays healthy, continues on his current trajectory, the sky's the limit for him. I want to mention this, and you would love this, Coach, because you're an Astros fan, it sounds like, from birth. Um, my favorite MLB player ever was a former Astro. I know he started with the Angels. He played with the Rangers when he finished. But Nolan Ryan. Yeah. Threw the best fastball for a 40 year old I've ever seen, heavy fastball. I mean, did, have you ever seen, Co- uh, Coach, have you ever seen a guy 42 years old throwing at 99 miles an hour like he did? No, he was an incredible uh, physical specimen and in just incredible shape and just God gifted thunderbolt on the right side of his body. And, and he took care of it. He had a great delivery, had great arm action. And, uh, you know, yeah, obviously, he's one of my favorite players of all time, too. He's In, in addition to being a, a Hall of Famer, he's a great guy as well and uh, has done a ton for the city of Houston and uh, very, very humble and uh, just a role model for everybody. I was also a big fan of Craig Biggio, who was a good astronaut. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Biz is uh, another guy that's a, a, a great dude. He would come out and hang out with us some when I was at A&M and uh, visit and work with our players a little bit. And, and uh, you know, what you see is what you get with Biz. He's a, he was a gamer that was hard-nosed and loved to get after. Coach, I know a little bit of baseball. See, I'll follow it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I remember, you know, I was an 80s guy, you know, and, and so, you know, I watched it in the 70s, but, you know, that in, it, I, I was still waiting for somebody to get to 60, 70 home runs or was 70 like Mark McGuire did. Um, but obviously we know that that's kind of changed with the baseball change and everything else. But, um, yeah, I love the game of baseball, and I think it's something that uh, a lot of kids do. And, and I wanted to get you on because I think, you know, the program deserves to be promoted statewide, and I wanted to have – our pro- broadcast is a vehicle to help you um, and to promote what the great things going on. And I think you're a great young coach. And um, still, still well, I certainly you. appreciate that, Lee. And and you know, uh, look forward to seeing what happens this year. You know, obviously, um, one last thing: uh, the, the matchup with LSU is always a very emotional one. I say that in a good way between two fan bases that love their programs, um, but. That's going to be another great matchup this year, right, Coach, when y'all play LSU? No doubt about it. We'll have uh, – it's going to be a tough matchup every time we take the field this year. And, uh, you know, UL, just kind of getting back to what you were saying, is uh, is a special, special place. Lafayette's a special city, and, and uh, we have a great university and administration, and, and we have the best fans in the country. Cajun Nation is uh, – unique one of a kind and and uh the most loyal passionate fan base i've ever seen so we're proud to be here and uh can't wait to see what the future holds for us here and coach the best food in the country right in lafayette no doubt about it you could eat at a different restaurant every night for an entire year you probably wouldn't hit them all i I, I told somebody the other day i said you know the only city i don't think i could go on a diet is lafayette nope (laughs) you got no shot what am I going to go on a boudin diet or, you know, a two fat? I don't know, man. You know, maybe eat peanuts in a dugout or something. I don't know. But, yeah, it's tough, man. But, Coach, don't hang up. I'm going to end the show. I want to thank you. I don't want you to hang up yet. But I want to tell everybody, go to our website, and you can look at all our articles. We do high school articles on players all over Louisiana. 
Um, and eventually I'm going to do a little baseball on our website, but the, the podcast is growing the baseball side. We've had Ben McDonald on, Coach, from the Orioles. Um, we look to get some more MLB guys on, like Bregman and some other players, also from UL uh, in the future. Maybe even Ron Guidry. We'll try and get Ron on pretty soon. Um, but, Coach, thanks again. We'll see you guys. Hey, Lee. Uh, Coach, don't hang up. Can, hang, I, don't, go ahead. can I mention something real quick? Sure. Uh, for, for guys that are listening that are interested, uh, you can go to CoachDags.com, and uh, that's our website. And my story that I briefly touched on is I wrote a book about it, 15 to 28, is on there. And, and uh, I've got a series of videos on our offensive system, the pack, and then uh, – back in November, just launched uh, a brand new book called The Pack Offense, and it's everything that we do from A to Z. And uh, Just for people that are interested out there, I didn't want to fail to mention that. So I appreciate you having me on, and you did a great job. Coach, mention again how they can get it. Can they go on Amazon, too, and buy it, or just give your email out? Uh, yeah, it'll lead you there. You can go to coachdags.com, and it'll take you anywhere you want to go. You, remarkable story, Coach. A lot of respect for you, too, man. I mean – you know, we've all made mistakes in life, you know, and it's like you said, it's about getting that opportunity again. And you've done a no doubt job. about it, man. And uh, but, coach, don't don't hang up. And guys, we will see everyone really soon. Thank you for. We'll see you Monday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brakeen.